Okay, now we've reached the skill ceiling. That exact phrase has been said by thousands of players, fans, and even rarely by some professional opinions. While some recognized early on that Rocket League's skill ceiling is definitely a high one, professional players continue to push it even higher, far beyond what anyone could have predicted at the start. Pros have proved the doubters wrong so many times that most people believe Rocket League doesn't even have a skill ceiling anymore. But it wasn't always like that. So because of that, today I'm sharing five times Rocket League pros shattered the skill ceiling. Today's video is sponsored by Thrustmaster. I'm sure you guys have heard of them by this point. They're known for their pro controllers where you can swap out the joystick and customize them however you want. Their eSwap S is a more affordable option that comes with all the same features that I really like about it. Normally, if your controller ever gets stick drift where the left stick stops working properly, you'd have to go to the store and get the whole thing replaced, just buy a whole new one. I must have bought like eight or nine new controllers at this point, all because of this one piece that starts to malfunction. But if that ever happens with the eSwap S, you just replace that one piece that stopped working. It's that easy. Not to mention, the fact that the sticks themselves are already higher quality and more precise than a normal controller. I haven't even talked yet about how nice the buttons feel. The buttons are like mouse clicks, so you can really tell when you're pressing them. If you're interested in getting one, click that link in the description. And if you're in the US, use code WP15 for 15% off until December 20th. Thank you again to Thrustmaster for sponsoring the video. To cover these moments, I figured it would be best to do it in chronological order, beginning way back in the day and finishing in present time. So to start, let's wind back all the way to 2017, a time where fundamental mechanics were still being perfected. The ceiling shot is a mechanic that's become fundamental for your typical experienced Rocket League player. A simple touch off the wall, drive to the ceiling, let gravity do the work, and a finish from an angle that's unlike any other mechanic in the game. It's one of the most beautiful maneuvers in Rocket League because of its uniqueness and incredible room for creativity. However, this mechanic has one fatal flaw. Because of how unique it is, when a player sets it up, an experienced defense immediately knows exactly what's going on. It's slow, it's predictable, and the complete opposite of a mind game on its own. It was widely thought for a while that the only way it would be scored is if you also place it with power and precision like a normal shot because of how easily expected it is. However, that exact thought turned out to be completely wrong. In this play, a player you might have heard of by the name of Squishy retrieves the ball off a kickoff. Immediately, he touches it up the wall and begins driving to the ceiling. The most obvious thing on planet Earth. This right here is where the fatal flaw is revealed. The two opponent defenders know instantly what's being set up here, right off the bat. One of them continues their path toward the net as a safety precaution, while the other challenges the play early to block the normal ceiling shot. What the defense is doing here is exactly what they're supposed to do. But unfortunately for them, Squishy was about to skip an entire step in the meta and pull something off that had never been done before. Instead of lasering the shot on net as normal, Squishy turns his car over, completely faking out the first defender. With one defender out, he continues turning his car over and uses his dodge to send it past that final obstacle. He weaved his way through the defense in mid-air. Fans already knew that it was only a matter of time before a ceiling shot was scored in the RLCS, but for the first one to be done in a way that revolutionized the mechanic at the same time, the crowd reaction says it all. Final minute, this was the scoreline in game three. Cloud nine. Unable to take it, but Squishy now with a daily shot! He puts it through! He's been going for this stuff all season, and he pulls it off here in the most clutch moments. The player to invent the shot himself is able to get the delayed front flip and just destroy Method on defense. Even they have to be impressed. At some point between then and now, there was a huge increase in how players used the physical game in Rocket League. Demos, bumps, all the way down to just threats for a bump. In 2017, there was an average of around 2.6 demos per game in the RLCS. Meaning over the course of the five minute match, there would only be a single demolition once every two minutes or so. The physical game existed, but it wasn't emphasized at all. Nowadays, there are about 6.7 demos per game well over twice as much as it used to be. So clearly there was a turning point in how pros began to utilize bumps and demos. And if I had to pick a particular moment that marks where it really began to change, it would have to be right here. In the grand finals of RLCS season five, 2018, NRG find themselves down by one with about two minutes left on the clock. 
Fireburner plays it safe and takes a 50-50 that pinches perfectly middle toward Garrett G, where instead of keeping possession and starting a planned attack, Garrett unfortunately sends it away completely into the wide open hands of Turbo Pulsa. A fundamental mistake. Or was it? The thing is, this is exactly what it looks like when a team is desperate for a clear, which is a mistake that happened fairly often at that time. They send it away prematurely instead of using the open space to their advantage. Turbo reads this perfectly as he jumps up and prepares to not make that same mistake by taking his time and sending the ball to his teammate on the left. Except that's not what actually happened. After that 50-50 that pinched middle for Garrett, Fireburner wasted no time immediately heading up field. What he saw as Garrett sent the ball forward was not a fundamental mistake, but an opportunity for a brilliant outplay. This play was so out of the ordinary at the time that the crowd had to double take and make sure they actually saw what happened, as they were silent up until the moment where it was shown on the replay again. Now Garrett, looking for Fireburner. Oh my goodness! Fireburner is a wrecking ball! Sniping Turbo Pulsa out of the air! Fireburner! If it wasn't there already, Rocket League's physical game had officially arrived. Definitely the longest evolving mechanic in history, the flip reset as we know it today was unknown by the community for months after it first became possible. And even after it was discovered, it took years before it started to be used competitively, to the point where even today, it's still miles away from being perfected and likely never will be. I have an entire cinematic documentary showcasing how the flip reset mechanic evolved over time because it truly goes that deep. People called it useless. They said we'd never see it used competitively. Nowadays, it's one of the most dangerous and most used mechanics in pro play. The great thing about things like these being pulled off in RLCS for the first time is that it immediately disproves anyone who thought it wasn't useful. You can't argue with it being used at the highest level. The moment that truly marked the turning point for the flip reset in competitive play occurred here at the Season 6 World Championship. In a tied series, the upper quarterfinals, Cloud9 vs Weedem Girls, Squishy began Game 3 with an incredible goal that had the announcers in shock. After a nice pass from Torment upfield, Squishy jumped up to take possession. He gets one touch around the first defender, and instead of placing it on net where the final opponent would easily block it, he gets the flip reset and dunks it around for the goal. Some casual viewers still didn't even know what a flip reset was at this point, so the casters felt it was necessary to explain why this was so incredible. Forma gets this one away, Squishy's airborne, keeping it here in the midfield, giving himself options, he's got an open in front of him, he got it it! underneath, oh my goodness, the flip reset off the defender, he pinches it. If there's ever a player to do it, it's going to be Squishy, he gets it, oh. he bounces off, he gets the dunk with the flip reset. Oh my goodness, we've that seen shot. some crazy shots from Squishy at Lamb, but this one is a new one. This is a new caliber. Spot. And again, if you truly don't know, he's making sure that all four wheels touch that ball so he gets another flip, so he manages to get the dunk on the defender while still putting it on target. After this land, pros who weren't already practicing them definitely started. Players that weren't even originally considered flashy were now going for them. It proved to be, from that point on, a mechanic that was here to stay. Double commits in Rocket League are normally one of the most blatant mistakes a team can make. They almost always result in an easy counterattack for the opponents. However, over Rocket League's history, there have been a few instances where a double commit ends up benefiting the team that made the mistake. In rare occurrences where a team gets insanely lucky, the first player in the double commit would whiff by accident as the other player hits it perfectly. The controlled chaos happening in midair would leave the opponents speechless as the ball gets thrown in the back of their net. A complete accident, but it works out perfectly in the end. For a long time, the only way this would happen is if it was totally unintentional. But over the last couple years, some pro teams have seen the value in it if it's executed on purpose. It sounds crazy, but they've begun intentionally double committing on occasion, with the plan for one of them to fake as the other puts a slammer on net. The earliest intentional use of this I could find was only a year prior to when they really started getting used. But the idea had been tossed around for a while even before that. 
The only thing stopping it from tipping into consistent pro play was the brain power it took to be prepared for it. It takes a totally different kind of thinking to execute such an outlandish play like this on the spot. And for two teammates to be on the same page at the same time about it, it's no wonder why it took more than six years of competitive play before pros finally had the brain power to pull this off consistently. Where we really saw the tipping point for this mechanic was at the 2022 Winter Major. They earned it here, and a big win over G2 would help that. As there might be a double tap coming! Gar puts it down! And Fury on the board first! You can feel if you make this thing. I think they really are going to try and absolutely put on a show here to get some crazy goals and a little misdirection and pesos. In today's era of high-level defense, there are a few things in Rocket League that feel impossible to save when done properly. But if anything falls into that category, the fake aerial play is definitely one of them. Despite the physical game only becoming even more common as Rocket League ages, there are still, and always will be, players who believe that bumps and demos are nothing but toxic behavior. There is literally blatant evidence that demos are extremely useful, especially at a high level of play, but even then, there are still people out there that refuse to accept the growing importance of Rocket League's physical game. Most of which are fans who just consider bumping and demoing cringe, but it's by no means an unpopular opinion. In the RLCS, there have been a couple instances where a player recognizes that they're completely outclassing their opponents, and out of pure disrespect, they begin chasing demos for a portion or even an entire game just for fun. Most notably, about a year ago, when Aleutian did exactly that for a full game, and they still ended up winning 6-0. He got 18 demos that game. However, this is clearly an exception, being that it was technically an RLCS match, but it was a very early stage in a clearly unbalanced matchup, and the demos weren't a genuine tactic used to win against real competition. Almost exactly a year later though, Calm on version 1 accomplished something very similar, but in a real competitive situation. In the semifinals of the 2022 NA Fall Cup, version 1 found themselves against NRG all tied up in the series. What everyone watching was expecting was some good old, standard, but impressive Rocket League gameplay. What they got was so much more than that. Just trying to change up how you approach a game is going to be so important. You know, I, I talk about Yan and Fury. Fury is a team that gets demoed all the time and they still manage, they actually do. Squishy able to clear that ball, and he gets another that demo. Must be Tom definitely. going for Garrett at the midfield, but still it's not enough <laughs> to get version one opportunity created by Tom. And now another demo. chance, Tom's demo clears the path. Heading into overtime, Com already had seven demos, which is considered a lot for a single player in a five minute game. But in this overtime, where most players tend to play extra careful due to the high stress and intensity, Com only got more aggressive. I, 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 oh, I wish that we had demos as a live update on that score. Forcing to shoot, the squishy to stay. Com again on a demo. That must be 10 in this game. First touch, flip reset, has Justin on the oh. rebound. Com takes the <laughs> It's demoed by Calm. Calm isn't even playing the ball. Four minutes of demo. Seconds to keep it around this game. Demo. More demos he's coming out. Invasive from... and infuriating. And he is everywhere. Torment reminding everybody to watch oh, out. Beast Mode will drop it in right at seven. By the end of overtime, Calm had totaled 20 demos in a single game. And it worked. It wasn't trolling. He wasn't trying to set a record. It was just Rocket League. It made people realize that rotation and strategy is completely up for interpretation. Playstyles we once thought would never work could eventually become the true meta. The best part about this? Version 1 ended up winning the entire tournament. It's moments like these that show just how little we know about what theoretical perfect Rocket League play could look like. All we know at this point is that we are so far away from wherever the true Rocket League skill ceiling lies, if there even is one.